Moin. Hi. Servus. Hallo. Hm. Ja. Okay, my name is Sebastian. And my name is Henrik. And we welcome you to a new workshop here at the Führen Gens Technology Center in Lüneburg. The previous video is a basic overview of the neurotonic system. In this video, we will simulate the handing over of the orthosis to the patient. And there's not much more to say to it, so have fun! Regardless of whether you have built an AFO or a KFO with a free joint, with a locked joint, or like now with a stance control knee joint, the approach is always the same. You check the orthotic alignment statically on the workbench, statically on the patient, and dynamically on the patient. Okay, so let's start by checking the alignment statically on the workbench. Of course, together with the shoe that the patient will wear afterwards to ensure that the correct heel height is taken into account. Ideally, with a self-adjusting laser plummet. The plumb line should fall through the middle of the thigh, in front of the mechanical axis of the knee joint, in front of the ankle joint, and now pay attention to this, it's very important, in the posterior third of the front half of the supporting surface. Before we continue with the functional check of the static alignment on the patient, we should of course familiarize the user with the new orthosis. By the way, my name is David and I will test the simulation orthosis for you today. Look David, this orthosis was custom made for you. Wow, it's quite light, but it still seems to be very stable. Absolutely. We have designed and manufactured the orthosis individually for you in terms of strength and functionality. We have succeeded in keeping the weight as low as possible by using very high quality materials. Hmm, high quality? What materials were used? The orthosis shells themselves were made of a fiber composite material, mainly carbon fiber. The metal components are made of titanium and aluminum. And so it is possible to provide a very high load bearing capacity with a very low weight. Mm, that sounds good. Let's try it on. Sebastian, can you explain to me the orthosis a little more? Yes, of course. We have installed the neuro swing joint at the ankle joint level. This joint has dynamic stops in the front and the back, and this can be adjusted to positively influence your gait pattern. On the knee level, we have installed the Neurotronic System knee joint. This is a stance phase control safety system. This means that the orthosis recognizes in the movement of the leg when the swing phase should take place and unlocks at the moment of swing. This allows you a very physiological gait with a very high level of safety. Okay, and it is controlled electronically and measured through this black box here. Exactly, this black box is the controller. The battery is built into it and a whole series of sensors that measure the course of movement and thus know when your swing phase takes place. Okay, and what happens if the battery of the controller is empty? If the battery of the controller is empty, the worst thing that can happen is that the joint remains locked. The knee joint electronics needs the power of the battery to open, and if the battery is empty, then the joint will remain locked. Okay, can I get the joint unlocked anyway? Yes, you can also unlock the joint mechanically. You can do this with this lever. When you push it forward, the joint is unlocked and you can sit down again or get into the car as usual. I'm still not sure of how to check the battery status on the controller. Let me show you. 
You can control the joint function with this tiny remote control. With this remote control, you can select the operating mode, automatic, to select the mode just described, free, to leave it unlocked, unlock if you want the joint to stay locked. You can press any button to test. Okay, press auto. Now the LED light is lighting up green. What does that mean? As long as this LED is green, the battery is full enough to run for a very long time. And when the battery status decreases, the color of this LED changes. It will first turn yellow and later red. And if the battery is already so empty that the system is about to stop its service, the controller will signalize with a beep that you really should charge your battery at this point. Okay, that's good. Are there any other ways to check the battery status? Yes, of course. In this case, we have decided to use a Bluetooth version. This gives you the possibility to operate the system with your smartphone and with your remote control as well. We can charge a user app and then you will be able to select the function mode, read the battery status, and also know how many steps you have completed with this system. So let's try the orthosis. Sure, why don't you just put it on? Okay, David, very important. When you get up in a minute, please do not start walking immediately. What we want to do first is to prove if the orthosis is correctly adjusted while you're standing. Or if perhaps we have to make fine adjustments. Do you want to hold on to something when you stand up? Do you want to use handrails or use forearm crutches? Oh no, that's fine, thanks. If it's okay for you, then please switch the orthosis to the lock mode for now. When you get up in a moment, you will hear a soft rattling sound. This is the ratcheting of the tooth ring inside the joint, which secures you from the first moment on and prevents you from falling back into flexion. Then you can stand up carefully. Oh, now I hear the slight rattle too. Yes. Oh, well, the first impression is not so bad, but we want to have a look in detail at how the orthosis is aligned. It feels safe. That's good. As usual, I dimmed the light a little bit for the following steps so you can better observe the laser line. We see the plumb line running through the center of the body, through David's hip joint, through the mid AP at the thigh, definitely in front of the mechanical axis of the knee joint, in front of the ankle joint, in the back third of the front half of the supporting surface. Before we start checking the dynamic alignment, the system should exactly know where the sensors are located in space. That means we have to calibrate them. To do this, I have connected the system with my expert app. And I have to select in the menu item, settings, calibrate, and see the instructions on the device. Place the orthosis vertically. That means in your case, please stand up. Okay. Then you stand still for a moment. Can you do this now? Yeah. Thank you. Then I press OK. Then you have to sit down again. I unlock the joint and we stretch the leg horizontally. Then press forward, OK, and that's it. That concludes the calibration process.
Before you take the first steps, I would like to turn on a beep tone. This beep will sound whenever the controller has recognized a step or a swing phase and will enable the unlocking of the joint. Okay, this beep can either have this sound or this one. Then why are there two different tones to choose from? For the cases, when we install the neurotronic system on both sides, that is, when the user has a neurotronic knee joint on the left and on the right legs, it makes sense if we can differentiate the beep of the left leg from the beep of the right leg. I understand. The beep tone is actually loud. Can you turn it down? Yes, we have a slider here. Now it's set to 5. You can turn it down to 0 so that you don't hear the beep anymore. Actually, you can choose the volume freely. But right now, for training purposes here in the corridor, or for the first time at home, or in rehabilitation therapy, it can be very helpful for you to use this beep to understand exactly how the system works and how you achieve an optimal control of the knee joint function. Okay, if after wearing the orthosis some time, I am used to it and I don't need the beep anymore, can I turn it off myself or do I need the expert app? No, this is not only possible with the expert app. It can also be turned off with the user app. There you have an identical slider above in which you can freely select the volume and also adjust it to zero, however you prefer. To start the dynamic alignment of the joint, the users should always make the first step with the affected leg. Always look at a series of steps at a time and observe the orthosis from bottom to top. Ideally, we should see an initial contact, a controlled loading response, a slight dorsiflexion in late mid stance, and a noticeable heel off in the terminal stance. For more information on the optimal function of the neuroswing joint, please see the video in our YouTube channel. The neurotonic joint will unlock before the swing phase reliably, but only if the extension moment produced by the floor reaction force on the forefoot lever is greater than the flexion forces on the joint. Let's repeat this once again. Initial contact, loading response, late mid stance, now the joint opens to initiate the swing phase and in terminal swing, the joint locks before the next initial contact. Regardless of the walking speed and step length, the neurotonic knee joint will register the end of the swing phase when the forward acceleration of the lower leg decreases. The user should always have a supervised physical therapy and receive a detailed introduction to the product and its functions. Due to the fact that the neurotonic recognizes the end of the swing phase when the forward movement of the leg is slower, the system will also recognize if the user should stumble, that is, if the leg gets stuck on the floor during the swing phase. Also, in such a case, the user will be reliably secured by the locking of the knee joint. The person can extend the leg, take a deep breath, and continue walking. The knee joint opens in late mid stance, terminal stance, and allows the initiation of the swing phase. If, however, the swing phase is not initiated as planned and the foot remains on the ground, the oscillation of the lower leg is not initiated and the system cannot identify the end of the swing phase and thus it will remain open. The user should be advised of this possible technical situation. Fine adjustment in terminal stance. Some orthotic users are used to extending the leg with force. This fast forward movement can cause the lower leg to bounce back after reaching full extension and the knee joint will not lock. In such cases, it is advisable to fine-tune the locking time, 
to avoid the resulting bouncing and the noise. Fine adjustment of rotation sensitivity. The neurotronic system recognizes the rotation as an unsafe situation and does not allow a release in such moments. But if such unphysiological rotation is part of the individual gait pattern of the user, it may be useful to reduce the rotation sensitivity of the system. Adjustment of unphysiological rotation. By reducing the rotation sensitivity, even users with a non-physiological rotation of the leg during the gait can reliably unlock the knee joint. In this video, we have shown you the operation of the neurotonic knee joint and the corresponding adjustments. We hope you have enjoyed this video. Please leave your thumb up if you liked it. Until next time.